So we understand the advantages of the CMOS family, and there are many, but we also understand that it has fundamental problems in terms of delay. In order to find a logic family that addresses the problems of CMOS while preserving its advantages, we first have to take a detour to something that seems really trivial, which is floating nodes. So the question is, if you have a node and this node is floating, that is to say it has an open circuit from all di directions, what is the voltage, what is the potential of this node? And to understand what's happening here, let's take an example. Let's, for example, look at the node Z, which lies between a PMOS and an NMOS. Now, if the input to the NMOS is 0 volt and the input to the PMOS is VDD, then both transistors are cut off. And so node Z observes an open circuit in all directions. However, node Z also is a node that has capacitance. It has some value of load capacitance. And so node Z, in fact, looks like this. It has a capacitance, and this capacitance observes an open circuit on its upper plate in all directions. So what is the potential of node Z? What is VZ? And the answer is VZ is whatever voltage the capacitance had before the open circuit was achieved. Now, the situation we are showing here in this, in this schematic is not a situation we could have seen in any of the logic families we have observed so far, simply because with the PMOS and the NMOS sharing their inputs, their gate inputs, there is no situation where uh, the input to the NMOS is zero volt and the input to the PMOS is VDD. The uh, value of V input will be enough to turn at least one of the transistors on, if not both of them. And so this is not a situation which we could have observed before. But now let's look, for example, at um, two nodes, X and Y. And so we have a node, X, where uh, this is connected to the drain of a PMOS. So this is node X. And there's some value of capacitance here, CX. And the gate of the PMOS is grounded. It's grounded. It's, um, it's at zero volt. Now, this is the situation where we, uh, where we had a CMOS inverter with an input of zero volt, the PMOS will be ohmic and it will short the supply to the output node. And so we will observe a voltage of VDD on the node X. And so if you want to sketch VX against time, because the gate input to the uh, PMOS is constant, VX is always gonna be at VDD, right? And so, Let's just imagine, for, for example, that there is a uh, source of noise or interference that affects node X, and the effect of this uh, noise or interference is to eat away at the charge that has been stored on the capacitor CX. And so capacitor CX stores a certain amount of charge, QX, which is equal to CX times VX, in order to produce an output voltage of VDD. Right? So it's going to be CX times VDD. Now, if some sort of, of interference takes away some of the charge, so there's a minus delta Q, this is going to translate into a minus delta VX. And so we're going to have a drop in VX equal to delta VX. Right? And VX, delta VX can be calculated based on the amount of charge we took away. Uh, why would some charge be taken away? We will see. Uh, three systematic reasons that charge could be taken away from a capacitor. But what happens in this case? So what happens in this case is that the node, the drain node of, of the PMOS drops below VDD. What this causes is a voltage drop across the PMOS. Uh, the PMOS is on because VGS is equal to minus VDD and it has a VDS drop and so it will cause a current to flow. This current is going to charge the node Vx again, and we cannot rest until Vx returns back to VDD. This is the only steady state solution that is possible in this case. And so any source of interference that causes charge to be taken away from node X is going to be restored. It's going to take some time to restore it. And in fact, this um, whole thing about the PMOS charging the node is exactly the physical reason behind propagation delay that we talked about in module three. But 
Node X and nodes similar to Node X are called low impedance nodes. And the reason we call them low impedance nodes is because they are connected to the supply or to the uh, ground through a relatively low impedance. In this case, the relatively low impedance is the impedance of the PMOS. And so we have a relatively low impedance of RP connecting the node X to, uh, to the supply voltage VDD. And the impact that this has on node X is that it ensures that node X will always restore itself back to VDD if there is any source of interference. Now, let's imagine that we also have a PMOS whose drain is connected to a, uh, a node, and this node naturally has a capacitance. This node is called node Y in this case. Now, the gate of the PMOS is connected to zero volt for a very long time. So this allows the PMOS to charge the capacitor up to VDD. And so we will start out with a node VY equal to VDD. And in this case, node Y and node X are no different from each other. But then all of a sudden, the gate to the PMOS goes up to VDD. And so the PMOS becomes a cutoff transistor. And so now it is not connected to the node Y. A node Y is now a floating node. It is a node that observes open circuits in all directions. So what is the voltage of node Y? The voltage of node Y is still going to be VDD because the charge still exists on the capacitor and there is enough charge to cause the voltage of the capacitive node to be VDD. So the voltage at node Y is always going to be VDD, right? However, the VDD that we observe in, on node Y in this case is very different from the VDD that we observed on node X because no, node Y in this case is called a high impedance node. A high impedance node is also alternatively known as a floating node. So it's a node that has an open circuit in all directions. We call it a high impedance node because the only path that it has to supply or ground is through a high impedance. In this case, the high impedance is the impedance of the cutoff PMOS, which is ideally infinity, but as we will see, it is a large but finite value. So how is node Y different? Let's assume that there is a source of uh, interference or coupling or noise or whatever that takes away some of the charge from node Y. We agreed that this is going to affect the node by decreasing the voltage of the node by a certain value, delta VY, right? So in, this, in the low impedance node, when this happened, this caused a VDS drop across the PMOS, which caused the PMOS to um, provide current in order to, reduce, to restore node X back to VDD. However, node Y is not connected to supply through an on MOSFET. The MOSFET has been cut off. And therefore, any lost charge from node Y cannot be replenished or replaced. And therefore, the voltage on node Y will continue at its reduced value until we find a path back to supply. And so node Y is now going to continue with this intermediate value and will suffer from the decreased voltage until we restore back the uh, path to supply. The path to supply can be restored by uh, dropping the gate input of the PMOS back down to zero, but that's, uh, that's another question. So if we compare the two nodes, node X and node Y, in, in the absence of any uh, non-idealities, in the absence of any sources of coupling, we will observe a supply voltage, a VDD, on both nodes. However, the quality of the VDD on the two nodes is very different. Uh, on node X, we observe a VDD that is strong, that comes from a low, low impedance connection to, to supply. If there's any reduction in the value of the, of the node, we can restore this by um, allowing current to flow through the PMOS to restore it back again. And uh, on node Y, on the other hand, there is a VDD, but it is caused by charge that has been trapped on the plate of a capacitor. Uh, once some of the charge is taken away, uh, this loss in voltage is irreplaceable until we create a path back to supply. So uh, this is important because we will use uh, a logic family that uh, uses a node similar to Y. And in fact, we will find that this family uh, preserves the advantages of CMOS while addressing all of its disadvantages. However, we will see that this logic family suffers a lot because of this 
uh, phenomenon, which is the irrepl irreplaceability of lost charges. And we will find that there are systematic reasons we will lose charge on high impedance nodes.